Dax, how are you, my friend? I'm good, buddy. I'm good. We got Brandy Glanville on today, which yes. I'm I'm stoked about, mostly because we've been trying to get her on for so long, because she is the perfect guest for Hollywood Raw. She's, She's great. unfiltered. She speaks her mind. She doesn't bullshit. She is exactly what we love in a guest. Yes, and uh, if this is the first time you're checking out the Hollywood Raw podcast, this is a podcast where we like to say we humanize Hollywood. We reveal the fourth wall of Hollywood. We kind of, you know, Dax and I are two uh, veteran journalists in the entertainment news world, and we're kind of revealing that fourth wall of what goes on. We talk to everyone from the celebrities, the publicists, the security guards, to the celebrities themselves. I mean, it's just uh, it's a whole circle of showbiz, and we always try to say we try to find out, you know, I don't the care real them. The yeah. yeah, we don't care. If we have an actor on, we don't care necessarily about the character they're playing. We care more about how they got the role. To me, that's what interests us. You know, we were we're curious about the auditioning, like how. But it's not even that. It's not even just like how they got the role. It's and what did you eat on set while being in Mission <laughs> yeah. Impossible for four months? Like or that's that's the shit we when like. You're on the way there. Who offered you cocaine in the club? <laughs> Who offered you coke at One Oak as you were trying to get your career going? You know, like we're curious about that stuff. So uh, it's uh, it's really fun. We've had some crazy guests over the past. Uh, how long have we been doing this podcast now? Oh God, like over two, two years, years now? now. Yeah, two years. I'm we've like had two everyone years. from from you know the Mark Cubans to the the Farrah Abrahams to the Larsa Pippins to you know Tony today, Robbins, Tony Robbins to you know Brandy Glanville, who's coming on today, who I'm so excited to talk to. Before we get to Brandy, Brandy Glanville. Uh, Dax, we like to do this thing where we like to read a review on air. Dax, can you, can you tell me why is it important for the people to to leave a review? A review is – guys, we don't charge for the podcast. This is like paying yeah. us. <laughs> this is the only money we get is your reviews uh, because it, it's, it's, it works the – Apple algorithm for iTunes. So the more reviews you leave, the five stars, it just pushes us up uh, kind of for discovery. People then can find us. So it's really beneficial. So as all we can do is beg people to leave reviews. It's really, really beneficial for us. So we like to go ahead and read a review on air to as a little thank you. So uh, let me grab one right here. What do we got? Reagan Gianio, is that am I saying that name right? Reagan, go with it, bud. Just go with G it. Gigino, it. best entertainment pod. Love listening to these guys. Their guests stay interesting and relevant. The fan question roulette is my favorite part. Keep <laughs> up the good work, guys. Oh, well, thank you, bud. I appreciate and, yeah, you. And speaking of fan question roulette, <laughs> if you guys want to participate, so what we do is we will actually take your guys's questions and uh, ask them to a celeb. The problem is you don't know what celeb's coming on, so you just have to submit a question, and it might be, do you like anal? And we play that Whoa. to Tony Robbins. <laughs> but you know what? We, we don't see the questions. Our producer sees them and just throws them up. Yeah, so, uh, you and know. Please don't just... ask if we like anal because that'd be really awkward to play yeah, in front of Tony Robbins. Yeah, it's going to make it weird for everyone, and especially for Tony. <laughs> it's going to be very weird. Plus, um, we know that's... Adam does. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh yeah it's the best listen it's the not that that's not the best it's the it's the best thing you do to support this podcast is leave a review five star only and just say a few words we really appreciate that we got a very 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 special guest today on the podcast dax tell me tell us about our podcast i'm guest. gonna tell you about our podcast guest after i give you the phone number so dial 833-HWR-LINE, 833-HWR-LINE. If you guys want to also just be a part of the show, leave questions, ask us questions, whatever. The line is open. If you want to drunk dial us, we're down for that too. All right. So guest today is a big one for us. She is an American television personality, an author, designer, former model, which I can't wait to get into. She's best known for appearing on The Housewives of Beverly Hills, but also has been on shows like Celebrity Apprentice, Big Brother, and so many more. Brandy Glanville, welcome. All right. So Brandy, thank you for coming on the podcast. Brandy, if I'm at a bar, what kind of drink am I buying you? Um, I think everyone knows I'm a white whiner, like, you know, cougar juice. <laughs> Cougar juice. I like that. <laughs> it is. I mean, anyone over 30 with kids is like white wine at night. Oh, yeah. 100%. Especially during the pandemic. I mean, the amount of bottles of wine we went through at my house, it was like one for every kid a night. 
Yeah, no, seriously. I mean, I was <laughs> switching to vodka and tequila, and I don't like either one. I'm like, what do I have in the house? <laughs> but luckily that's oh i mean it's kind of getting over so it's i've cut yeah. back a lot and i've lost some weight because i gained a lot of weight during you know drinking every day sure it, well it's hard not to good god i mean it's crazy oh man <laughs> what else to do except <laughs> so are you isn't ending <laughs> I have a question for you so when you go out and you're you're at a bar are you constantly getting hit on Okay, so I haven't been at a bar in a year and a half. <laughs> I don't. I haven't been. At, I mean, I've been to dinner with my girlfriend since we reopened. Um, I I don't go to bar. I don't know. I, I don't know what I do anymore. Like I don't. I sit on my couch right now, but like I'm on dating apps, and I get a lot of guys that like me on on the apps. I don't know what real life is anymore at the moment. <laughs> I hear you. you, know? I hear you. So how, what are you on? What apps are you on? Are you on Raya? Which apps exactly are you on? I'm on Hinge, and then I tried to start Match, and I realized it's just not, it's not good for me. It was yeah. like everyone looked like my father, and I was just like, I can't. No, this is. But Hinge is pretty cool. I'm not on Raya. I just feel like I've dated most of the people on there, and I just want a normal human. But what but is, is that hard to be a celebrity on a normal dating site like that? Because like Raya is kind of like the exclusive dating site for people that don't know out there. But you being on like, you know, uh, uh, what did you say? Hinge? If you're on yeah. Hinge, are, are people just hitting you up because they want to date a celebrity? I don't think so. Because besides you guys, most straight men don't have any clue who I am. I'm like, <laughs> 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 I just say I'm an author and like, it's cool. Like they don't know. So it's <laughs> just the truth. Um, the straight men that come up to me are like, my wife loves you. I don't get like hot guy DMs. It's so annoying actually. Like I wish I did. Yeah. What what is your age oh, range on the dating apps? Oh, like for the guys you put in, what what age do you put in? I put in thirty eight to fifty five. Okay. Okay. I know that's fair. no, that's that's fair and yeah. that's fun. That's interesting. Because well, for a while I was dating all of these younger guys, like only younger guys would ask me out, and I don't want the Demi Ashton thing. Like you know, as I get older, that it's just going to make me crazy. So, so you, so you would actually okay. lean to an older man than a younger man if if someone pops up on your timeline? Yeah, absolutely. Just because I feel, I want to feel young. I don't want to always be insecure about my age. Going, oh fuck, like this. Now I have to lie about my age again, and it's not fun. But I mean, I would like. So I'm six months older than my ex husband. So even the same age is kind of good. I just, I don't know. I don't know. I haven't dated in so long. I have no idea what's going on in the world. So let's well, start from the beginning. You, yeah. you, you know, like you started as a model. You you know, that's where you first kind of got your into show business. You started at the age of 16. How does that happen? How does like you always hear these stories that these models get discovered at 16 years old? How were you discovered at 16 years old? So I was walking through a mall. Um, I happened to be super tall and super skinny. And this guy gave me his card for look modeling agency in San Francisco. I was living in Sacramento at the time and I wanted not to be living in Sacramento because I hated it. I still, I love Sac now. I love going back, but I could not live there. Um, and they're like, do you want to go to Paris? I'm like, yeah, I've never left the United States. Of course I want to go to Paris. And then that was it. I just, it kind of like most things that happened, it fell into my lap. So just like housewives fell into my lap. I never seeked out to be on TV. Um, I never seeked out to be a model. It's just things that happen to happen to me. Interesting. You know what I think of when I think of these young girls getting into modeling, what a kind of a dangerous world it is out there. Did you have any of the like, I, I feel like we hear about them all the time, but any of those creepy experiences where people try to, and I don't mean necessarily like really bad, but I just mean where people are taking advantage of the fact that you're young, you're impressionable, you don't know how much you get paid in the modeling industry. I feel like we hear a lot of that. Did you ever have that? Oh yeah, especially when I would, when I first went to Italy, like they love blondes over there and everything was like, oh, come to dinner, we have this group thing. And then you'd get booked on a job where you're like one of like five girls and you're at a dinner in the mountains. I'm like, am I a hooker or am I a model? Like, are we actually taking pictures here? What's happening? <laughs> um, 
But luckily for myself, I'm I'm a very loud mouthed individual. And if anything was going sideways, which they always tried, I was like, fuck you, I'm out. And you kind of learn which agencies do that to the girls and which don't. But if you're naive and you're going into this, you're definitely going to have some troubles. Yeah. yeah, You modeled for some huge brands, like, you know, the biggest brands out there you were modeling for. And it, the crazy part is it's like what you're you're talking about, these experiences where, you know, I'm in New York City. I see, you know, you go by Cipriani, you see beautiful women, all models sitting with, you know, a few gentlemen. And you, wonder, family, right? you know what? the de- Yeah. It's like, what's the deal? Are you your models clearly? But are you escorting? Are you getting paid to be here? Like, what's the deal? So you had those experiences where these guys would pay you just to go to dinner with you. Is that right? Well, they wouldn't pay me. So the agency, or that makes me sound like a complete hugger. Yeah, the sure, agency yeah. would say, you have a job in like, you know, mounts, wherever. I remember that specifically because I was very unsettled when I got to the, the job. There's other girls and they're like, okay, we're shooting in a cave and bathing suits. So we all got in bathing suits and then we're in this cave and there's no photographer. And you're just like, what and i just i was so uncomfortable i just left i was like okay and it wasn't the time you go and call an uber so i literally had to figure out how to get back to milan by myself at like 17 and a half years old so you know and a lot of times what you see in new york you're seeing they're sitting with the owner of the agency or they're sitting with a big client and i mean it is it looks dicey i'm not gonna lie but it's you know most people it like Agencies just do that. They want you to meet their clients. They want to show off their girls. And, you know, you have to be careful for sure. Yeah. Did you did you ever see any of the big creep balls out there? Because I feel like the, the people's names keep it. I mean, obviously Epstein was huge in the modeling world and all the crap that he would do. But did you ever see them at the party? Because I, I remember hearing that they would always have like all these women around them and people didn't know the, the truth, what was really happening. I think that was like after my time because I'm much older now. So I think 17, I mean, that's over 20 years ago. So I didn't know them, but I knew a lot of creeps. A lot. <laughs> For sure. So, so what yeah, are your parents? All the club owners and all, you know, you just know kind of when you're, I lived between Paris and Milan for six years. I traveled to Japan, all these places. You get to know, you know, what you're doing. Hopefully. I did. What are your parents? What do your parents think about this? You're 17 years old. You're, you're overseas right now. Like, do they just, how were they like, was it a hard conversation to have with them? Like, Hey, I'm 17 years old. I'm going to go live on my own in another country right now. Or, you know, like were they cool yeah. with it or. How, no, my dad was like, get the fuck out. I'm so happy. I was, my dad, and I did not get along. He's like later. I actually moved out of my house prior to leaving. I moved in with a friend. I'm a middle child. I, I'm very confrontational when like my dad with everyone like kind of walked on eggshells around him and I was like, fuck you. You can't do that. You can't treat my mom like that or whatever. And so I had a very tumultuous um, time in my house. I got to fix this fucking hair Um, in my (laughs) household. Sorry guys. Um, So no, they were happy. And we were really independent. We were latchkey kids. We had had jobs. My first job, I was 12. You know, we had to pay our own insurance. We like, we, we were very uh, capable children. So yeah. And then how did, so flash forward, you're, you become a successful model. How did you end up meeting Eddie Cibrian, by the way? I, I don't think I know this story. Um, I was in Milan and they were casting for a Kid Rock Coors Light commercial and he picked me. I flew to LA and I, after I shot the commercial, I went out with some of the girls I met. And I was at Granville. Do you remember that club? Granville oh, yeah. does sound familiar. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I was I it. Be, like back in the day. And I was there and I met him and I just never left LA. And that was it. We were together for 13 years. Wow. Did you, you, I was going to say, did you date any other big celebrities that, <laughs> besides Eddie? That like yeah. we didn't necessarily, wasn't necessarily public news, but I, I'm just curious. Yeah. I think that there was a, a, a like a, little span of time where before I had it at Eddie's like obviously it wasn't the same day but like I met the girls I started staying here a little bit I went out I met Eddie but prior to that I had been dating David Schwimmer and then before that I went on a date with Matt LeBlanc then I dated Ben Stiller for a little while what seriously all these people that's amazing and now was this like 
like right during friends after during friends? friends it was like during friends and i remember he used to work in sealer during the day and it really bothered me um wait who did which one schwimmer <laughs> like he'd get off set and just like keep his makeup on no like when he wasn't working he would put concealer on well, that's and strange I didn't like it <laughs> Did you did you end up watching the Friends reunion? I watched a portion of it. Um, I I don't know. I couldn't get into it in the beginning. I just I don't know. I'm not. I'm also not a diehard. Like my kids love the show, and I loved it when it was on. But I don't think I want to see them back together. Like I I just want to appreciate what I saw before. I don't want to see it. Like I feel sorry for some of them not working. <laughs> Somebody got fat. Like I don't want that. Like Matthew Perry's smile was annoying. And I was like, okay, I can't watch this. So we turned it off. I, I am so fascinated right now. How, okay, can you give me the backstory of how you ended up meeting Schwimmer or Matthew Perry? Oh, wait, you said Matt LeBlanc. Who the Matt, hell did you say? Matt LeBlanc. Matt LeBlanc. Matt LeBlanc ben that, Stiller. And, but uh, no, but how did you meet? Because these two guys, this when Friends was on, this was like insane superstar level. So right. how sure. did you meet them? So I don't, do you know Sunset Marquee, the whiskey? Yeah. And I, okay. That at the time they were only letting models, rock stars, and actors in. And so I would go there with a bunch of my model friends, and we would go in in this tiny little bar. And that's where I met. Actually, I met my girlfriend went out. My roommate went out with David first, and I was supposed to go like Matt and David a double date, and then I liked David more than Matt. It was then we basically swapped, and. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's like you. I met everyone there, like everyone you could think of. It, it was like everyone was doing coke in the bathroom. It was like the good old nineties. Yeah. <laughs> I can I tell you that I love how just brutally honest you are at every moment of your life. I think it is so <laughs> fucking refreshing because there's so many people sure. that we talk to that just aren't like open, and it's so nice to have a guest on where we're just like, oh, finally, someone that's just real. Oh, well, they, I mean, I think people are fucking petrified right now to speak about anything because of all of the clapback and the the people are just like on my podcast. I'm like, I ask a question and they're like asking their publicist if they, if they can answer. I'm like, yep, this is boring. <laughs> so true. Uh, so then, so you you saw a lot of people there. Obviously, Ben Stiller. So who would you date the longest? Was it Ben? Yes. Gotcha. How was he? Was he like at that time? Was he doing SNL at that time, or what was he doing? So it was. What was he doing? He was doing movies. I like he was friends with Stephen Dorff, and Stephen Dorff basically dated all of us at one point. Like, not I went on a date with it, but never dated him. And yeah. they were best friends with him and Guy O'Siri, this little crew. And Guy and I became like best friends. And then it was just a weird like. I haven't talked to him in years, but it was just like a weird little. I had a bubble that we were all like just swapping models and dudes. <laughs> like I like him now. I like him now. But it was fun. I mean, it was like the most fun I've ever had. Who was during that time? Who was the most fun person to party with? Me. Would you? I, you would say that. <laughs> I'm so fun. No, I am. It, like it's almost to the point where I, I had to marry somebody who was the fun police a little bit because, like, if I go, like, I, I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, so of all of your celebrity datings that you've done, who was the best kisser? Oh, I don't, I don't even remember what sex like sex was like with my ex husband. Like, I really <laughs> don't recollect. <laughs> I don't like. I mean, I wouldn't date someone that's not a good kisser because that's like so important. So I can't imagine that. I'm pretty sure they were all fine. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Who was the guy? Would you say Stephen Dorf? That Stephen Dorf at that time was the biggest player. He was. He was dating like the supermodel girl, and he was. He had this huge movie career, and he, yeah, for sure, he was like the it guy for movies. Was he just a charming guy? Like, what, I don't, I don't see it. Listen, I'm a straight guy, but like, I don't understand why. Stephen I think Dorf he's just like in the, the circle. He's like he in the circle. Like, he, he knows he, everyone. He. Was hot. he he was the man. He was doing. He was the star of all of these movies, and he was young and attractive. I mean, what? Like that's the the pool. I mean, I don't. He wasn't the nicest guy. <laughs> I yeah. mean, yeah. So Eddie, back to Eddie. How is your relationship with Eddie now? Obviously, there was a public breakup, but where where do you guys stand now? You know, that's funny that you asked because 
literally last night. So Eddie's birthday is tomorrow. I have all fucking Gemini's in my life. Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, my dad, my son, my ex-husband, two of my best friends. Um, and usually we spend the holidays together, like Easter, you know, Christmas, Thanksgiving. But I've never been invited to like Eddie's birthday because why would you want your ex-wife at your fucking birth? I mean, there's no point. But then yesterday I got invited to his birthday tomorrow by Leanne. And then my son actually said, he's like, well, dad didn't invite you for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to say that I've seen you post photos up over time. Like, uh, I think it, what was the last one you posted? Was it not Christmas? No, I forget. 18. Yeah. We had, we had so many because yeah. we had two graduations. Yeah. My son turned 18 and that was like his birthday dinner. But, you know, the truth is Leanne and I get along really well. We really I, do. I, know, I love seeing that. I love seeing not only that because this, the, the drama that happened in your life surrounding Eddie and Leanne, Obviously, it was hugely publicized. So for you guys to switch that around 180 degrees and be hanging out with each other, that's not a common thing. And how, how did it become that you guys are now friends? That's a good question. I think we both grew up a lot because obviously it's been a, it was a decade of fighting. Um, and I think our kids had a lot to do with it because it's not, I mean, the kids love when we're all together. And it's so obvious. They're so happy. They're like giddy little creatures. Um, and my, I really, I, my memory is shot. Like people are like, my friends are still mad at her and the hand. I'm like, if I can deal with this, you guys need to get over it. Um, no. and then I had, I saw a friend recently. I'm like, Oh, I wonder why we were friends. And my friend reminded me, I'm like, you know what? I guess I just fucking forget shit. And then I'm just fine with it. But honestly, I think we've both grown up quite a bit and, you know, we both love Eddie's parents. We both love the kids. And Eddie's going to be in my life for the rest of my life. And we bicker still like we're married and we're not, you know. So he's got, he shows up everywhere with his, his what are his sister wives? It's me and <laughs> Leanne and Eddie. <laughs> so do you like call Leanne or do you guys text each other or what? Like, yeah, I don't really call anyone. Block? Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I text with Eddie and Leanne. Like if I'm driving because I got a new car and it's a fucking badass. Um. I will call because I am going to crash. But otherwise, I really am a texter. Gotcha. Interesting. So it, how is it like when that – I just remember when everything was going down and it was so publicized and it was so wild. What was going on through your head? Like were you were you sane at that moment when everything was going on? Because the media was obviously throwing gas on the fire and you got so many probably people in your ear. How are you doing during that situation? I was a fucking wreck. I was a train wreck. I mean, my life as I knew it blew up, you know, it was the hardest time of my life. It's like, I, you know, my family, I lost my family in a weird way. And then it's it, then, you know, housewives came in and, but you know, as you know, with all the tabloids and TMZ and all of that, it was just constant. You couldn't, you couldn't escape it. There was no escape because it wasn't just one person in the spotlight after housewives it was all three of us. Eddie's an actor. She's a singer. I'm on reality TV. And it was just always, it's in this day I get Google alerts like, oh, they share a rare photo, Leanna Brandon. Like, we share photos all the fucking time. <laughs> like, you know, so I don't, I, it was just a hard thing that you go through and you get through and, you, you know, it's not like you forget it, but you forgive and you move on. So I guess that's what I would ask because obviously you're not the first person to be in that situation. There's a lot of people around the world dealing with that same situation right now with cheating and divorce and all that. But where did you find, I want to say like the strength to like move forward, move on. Was it just your kids? What, how did you do that? Cause other people deal with it privately. You were doing it, deal with it publicly. So what would be the advice you would give to someone out there right now? Well, honestly, I think the fact that I had no choice, but to deal with it publicly really helped me because I couldn't sweep it under the rug or keep secrets. I had to like man up and get over it. And of course my kids, I said, if it wasn't for my kids, I'd be in a straight jacket, but everyone was watching and I had to get my shit together. And as we all know, there's plenty of pictures on the internet where my shit is not together. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I went, I went through ups and downs and I did it all in front of the camera and I am in a great place now. And I really think it helped me. I had to, I couldn't be in denial because it, when we broke up, I was still madly in love with this person. So I was like, 
you know, heartbroken, but it made me like pull my bolts, bootstraps up and be like, okay, I have to move on for everyone. I have to put on a brave face. I have to do this for my kids. My family was devastated. They loved my ex-husband. So it was like everyone was looking at me to be the strong one. So I had to be the strong one. Do you feel that that drama in your life really caught the attention of Real Housewives and was a catalyst for getting on the show? It's a hundred percent why they hired me. They told me that they liked that I, cause I don't, you know me, I have an opinion. And when they would say something, I, anyone that called me, I'd give them a quote. I'm like, yeah, they did this. <laughs> they can fuck off. Like I'm not, you know, I'm not spoken. I'm not a wallflower. And so they definitely noticed that and they reached out to me and I mean, they're like, Oh, this lady is a train. I mean, the crazier, the better for housewives, let's be honest. So I, yeah. Well, that's what, that's what I, I've, consistently heard that you are one of everyone's favorite housewife you know like you are non-bullshit you you bring it as it is and so i think a lot of people are going why the hell isn't this woman on the show i think it's it's hard because you bring what everyone wants well that's very sweet of you to say i don't think i could outdo my old self at this point <laughs> i was out there and everyone hated me and so i was just coming out swinging because when people are nice to me, I'm nice back to them. I'm not like, but I am combative. Like if you're going to come for me, I'm going to come back at you. And when I started the show, everyone was going after me and it was mm. horrible. But now it's like, I just, I don't think I could compete with my younger self. And it's just a different beast now. It's more like glam and let's, you know, get our, who's getting their hair and makeup done and who has the best clothes and cars. I don't think it's really as real anymore. Well, do you think if the cast shifted, because every couple of years people come and go, do you think if there was a major shift in cast, you'd be willing to do the show again? I mean, I, I just feel like I know, I know it so well at this point. Like I know exactly what they're doing. I'm, I'm just, I, I could know what the producers are thinking when they're thinking it. I just, I might be too smart at this point. <laughs> But, but, that, but that's what I'm saying. It's like, you're such good TV. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're good TV, so it's what people want. And I don't know. That, that That's the only thing that I know that, obviously, the cast members didn't make your life necessarily easy on the show. So if they weren't there, I feel like you could then be yourself. Um. Yeah, of course. If you throw a whole bunch of new people in that we have no idea the backgrounds of other people, I think that would be really interesting. But when you have history with people and it's just even this last season with Denise and everything, it it was so stressful for me. Like I I was and I was only shot, I only shot like four times, but that's how I felt for the five years that I was on it. It was such a hard thing to be judged as a human being mm -hmm. like for you, not as an actor, not as a this. They're judging you as a human on the highlights of your bad behavior and you know, social media. And for a long time, I really cared about it. I don't anymore. Thank God. But it was not a, it was not a healthy show to, for me to be doing for a long time. When's the last time you ran into Denise? Oh my God. That's so funny. I have not seen her since the show, but she literally liked the photo of Eddie Leanne and at Mason's birthday, just the other day, she liked the photo after she called me a liar and all these crazy things. I was Wait, like, liked it on your Instagram or oh on? Goodness, on my Instagram. What? Exactly. I was mind blown. I was like. Was she what? <laughs> I am shocked right now. I was shocked too. Cause I, was, I looked at it cause my girl that does my social for me. Cause I do have help because I just don't, it just isn't fun. She's like, look who liked your photo. And I was like, Oh, e cosmetics. That's awesome. Cause it's a company I worked with. And she's like, no dummy look. And I was like, Oh my God, this makes, is this the most public olive branch ever and weird or what is this? Like I was, I still am in shock. I, I don't, I don't know. Does that, <laughs> does that make you want to reach out to her and just, Hey, just want to make sure, see how you're doing. See, make sure you're doing well, wishing your family. I actually yeah, did. Yeah. I sent her um, like a couple days ago because that's when I found out about it. Um, and I just said, "Hey, like it sucks the way I'll, I'll just sit down and thanks for liking the photo." Yeah. Did she see it? I don't know. I don't know how to check my team. <laughs> <laughs>
I will figure it out, guys. Don't worry. Mason, you, like, he helps with my Instagram, and I have a girl that helps me, too. Do you, do you regret talking about the threesome? It wasn't a threesome, but no. it's just the two of us. Just well, the two, do you oh, regret sorry, talking about the, the hookup in the bathroom at the – what was it, Nobu? It wasn't – oh, yeah. No, no, we were at the Cuban place. Uh, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. Cafe Habana? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know what? I, I don't because – she, like she put me in a box that like she like kind of made me feel like I had to keep that secret and I'm not a secret keeper. I mean, it just made me uncomfortable because I am outgoing and I do want to speak my truth and I do feel like she screwed me over a little. So once I told Kim on the show, I knew I had to say it because you can't tell one of those bitches and then not say it. And I was like, I am not saying it. I go, you cannot make me. I, but I drunkenly told Kim, and then she, you have to share. That's your job. <laughs> By the way, I wanted to ask. I saw you post a photo like the other day with you and Kim Richards and Kathy Hilton, and all the comments, literally every comment was like, "Are you friends with Kim? Are you friends with Kim?" So, what is your relationship status with with Kim? I would love to know. No, I love Kim. She's amazing, and she, we were best friends. And then she fell off the face of the earth, but she's done this before where she just goes missing or she meets a guy and then she doesn't talk to anyone. Um, I love her. We didn't have a fallout, but I haven't talked to her since New Year's Eve. Wow. So interesting. How do you think Kathy Hilton will do on the show? I think she'll do good. I mean, I think. Is she good addition knowing her personality? Do you think she'll get it? You know, you've been around her a lot on social and I feel like she's she has more money than all of them probably put together. And then she's in Tahoe wearing sweats and like and sockies, which I, that's what you do in Tahoe. You don't get dressed up. I grew up going to Tahoe. It's like meth addicts and, and casinos and snow. Like you, there's no need to get dressed up. So when you when you do this show, and I guess I'm just asking for my own personal curiosity. Do, do the producers ever, like, sit down with you guys and, like, egg you on to, like, stir the pot or to, like, do they say, hey, this one just called you a bitch behind your back? Because I'm always curious because there's so much drama that I'm, like, how do they always know about all the drama? You know, I think it's different for every franchise. So, you know, our producers, when I was on, they made you feel like they were your best friends. And so they would tell you everything and, like, and you would tell them everything because you were going to dinner when you weren't working with them and... I mean, there were there were certain pe- certain producers that would like text us when we're like all in the limo saying do something, and I'm like fuck, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> That's like literally. I got out of the limo and he's like, you're giving us nothing, and I go, I quit. I'm like, why would I have to do something? It's like text somebody else. So, <laughs> well, yeah. they know you're good TV. I'm telling I you, that- I don't. I'm not a fucking show pony. I don't like. Yeah operate when you say what am i going to do something if there's something to do let somebody else carry the weight so have you talked so when i did your podcast adam i don't know if i told you so i did brandy's podcast i don't know like a year ago or something you told me on there that lisa vanderpump has a secret closet where she keeps all her real fur jackets Mm -hmm. and she took you in there and she basically said don't ever tell anyone about this and (laughs) cameras weren't allowed inside this closet because she is such a i'm sure some of them know too yeah no for sure And, and because she's such an animal rights activist so for her to have a closet full of real furs is kind of like against what she says plus she'll go out and say it's not real fur when that story came out after our conversation on your podcast, which unfiltered is her podcast, by the way, it's awesome. Okay. It's exactly what you would want from Brandy. So go check it out. But did she ever reach out or did you hear anything from her after that? No, no, she, because it's the truth. What is she going to do? <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't know. I, I haven't even seen her. And I have like my PO box is up at the Glen and all of those girls are always up there eating. And I saw her car once, but I didn't see her. And I was thank- thankfully we were all wearing masks. So at the time, <laughs> I don't know, yeah, I was like, oh, I just don't feel like the drums. You know, it's different with her and I. Yeah. Uh, I don't feel I like I would like to make up with Denise. I don't want to make up with Vanderkind. Where did that one go so sour? Because you guys were really tight. Um. She. It was when I was depressed and the audience wasn't liking me anymore. 
So according to her, she's like, the audience isn't liking you. I can't be with you. They want Kyle and I to be best friends again. And I was like, the audience, like, well, this is my real life. <laughs> like I have, my dog is lost. My dad's not talking to me. I'm in a depression. Like, sorry, but that's like we're, what we're sharing on the show. So she was like, you kind of lost your audience. And that was, that, it just made it very clear to me that it was, our friendship wasn't actually what I thought it was. That is weird I, that she's dictating friendships based on audience, audience approval. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Weird. What You know what's interesting? Like, you know, Bravo celebrities are constantly encouraged to be dramatic. You know, that's what Bravo is. That's what the shows are about. And then you go and watch what happens and you say some stuff about Joanna Krupa, Joanna Krupa, whatever, and gets you in trouble. Do you feel like Bravo should protect their stars a little bit more? I'm so afraid to talk about this because I'm not supposed to talk about it at all. But yeah, I do. Like just at not that specific situation. I mean, in our contracts, it says you can't sue another housewife, but there's so many caveats that and loopholes and you're able to. And it's just like, I, I, again, that's another reason why I wouldn't want to go on right now, because what if I do say something stupid? Like I always do. I like that. That cost me half a million dollars. It cost me all of my savings and they didn't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah. They kept airing it. I had to beg them not to. Or I can't actually. I can't even talk about this because I I cannot have another lawsuit. Yeah, we hear you. We hear you. We'll move on. <laughs> yeah. What yeah. is a, what is your relationship with Andy? You know, uh, like do you you know does he ever reach out to you and say hey checking in? You know, like or is he yeah. just he does, how how involved is he? We text all the time. We text um, you know Mason and or Jake and Mason and him have a birthday a day apart, so we text then. He. You know, we're friendly. Like, if I text him, I'll get an immediate response. Like, it's not like, you know, and I text him that Denise <laughs> liked my photo because we were all like, what the hell? <laughs> Do you think that he's been fair to you throughout all, everything at, re at reunion shows and all of that? Um, I mean, I have a long email that I will read for him at some point, personally, between him and I. But at the same point, he did give me my career. Yeah. So as much as I have issues with certain things, I, you know, I've done 13 other reality shows since housewives. And I don't think anyone else has done any other housewife has done that many. And so I do owe him, you know, a big thanks. So it's like, it's like what you're going to get mad at the person that's feeding you and housing you. But you know, we have, there's some issues, but we are friends. Like we definitely text, we keep in touch. It's I, if I see somebody on watch what happens live, I'll text him the question. And really, could love was before when like they were actually live because I wanted to say something, and he was like, "Okay." So yeah, no, we're friendly. So if watch what if, if I'm sorry, if Housewives came back to you and said, "You know what? We need we, the show needs to be shaken up. You know, we want to bring you back on. Would you come back on the Real Housewives franchise?" I'm doing something else right now that means a lot to me. And I can't say exactly what it is, but it's it's a completely different side of me that I hope that will people get a, like a more rounded version of who I am because I am that crazy fun person. Like I told you, I am the most fun person I know. <laughs> but there is another side to me. Yeah, I, I got a weird question for you. You're you're in LA, obviously. You know, you see some beautiful women all over the place. You know some of the cosmetic things they've done. What's the craziest beauty treatment you've ever done for yourself? Oh my gosh, there's so many. <laughs> well, I where do I start? I'm a, like I'm obsessed with, and it's so crazy because everyone's like, "Oh, she's got a new face," or this or that. I've never had plastic surgery on my face. I've had my tits done. I have my vagina tightened. That's it. So, vagina tightened. Yeah. Right. What is that called? Is that what? what I never heard. What is, no, is that a? Uh, Re Isn't it a rejuvenation? Yeah. It was oh, gotcha. One. Sorry, I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, it was the laser yeah, one. Back that. It was like serious surgery before all of these people started doing like the. Anyway, it was very painful. Um, but what did I try? Oh, I put snail feces on my skin. That was gross. Right. <laughs> yeah. Was that and what is that did supposed to do? Yeah. It's just supposed to rejuvenate your skin, and I it was smelled all. I don't die. like. I will gag. Um. <laughs> It was really bad. What else have I got? Did you do the vampire one where it's like all bloody all over your face? 
I didn't do that one, but I did a similar one where they don't put the blood back in your face. They put the, like the PR, it's called PRP. They put yeah, like, yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. So that one I've done. How was that one? Was that a good? I mean, I don't, I mean, some, my, some of my friends are like, oh, he looked really rested. I, I didn't see a big difference. Um, I did this radio frequency thing. Don't do it. It's called uh, profound. Don't ever, anyone out there, don't ever do it. Oh. I'm about to take this weave out because it's driving me nuts. <laughs> um, what else about? I mean, so walk me through what happened when you burned your face because I think we were going to do an interview with you yeah. right around the same time that your face got like severely, severely burned. Yeah. What? What? Walk us through what the heck happened? How did? How did this go down? So this really sucked, and um, it still really sucks because I have scarring, and I'm still dealing with that. So I had psoriasis and during the pandemic, I had it really bad on my face. And like, it's one thing to have it on your body, but to like see your face like cracking and bleeding. And it's like, it, it was just so depressing. Honestly, I was so depressed. I was actually glad there was a pandemic, but I, I mean, obviously it, it caused it because I thought the world was ending. I was so scared of everything. Um, I had a video visit with my doctor and she put me on this UV light and the prescription said to use it for 17.3. I assumed it was minutes. It was seconds. Oh. Yeah. So, and you could, you didn't feel a burn or anything. It's just like, you just hold it there. And it, it and so I burned my retina. I couldn't see for three days. I had to keep, it was the worst. Uh, that's it. So now I yeah, have. I, I saw the pictures that you had released. It looked really painful with like, blisters and how long did it take your face to heal after all of that well it's still healing that's the problem i mean it just i have a lot of makeup on it right now but it's uh it's healing and it's it's so depressing to talk about can we change the subject sorry sorry <laughs> yeah i just i think it's just been like such a topic yeah, everyone's everyone chatting like, oh, about and it's like your face and i'm like i fucking burned it on accident like i'm not healing from anything but two you know a third degree burn two second degree burns it's it's it was and I would say light therapy is a very common thing with skin issues. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of people do those like UV boxes and stuff, but wow, 17 seconds versus 17 minutes. That is a, a big difference. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah. So we do a speed round here. Now, right. before we do a speed round and, uh, you know, a lot of quick questions. Just give us an answer. What's the first thing that comes to mind? Can you do that for us? I... <laughs> Um, if you guys, if I say anything that's canceling of my life, if you believe that. <laughs> <laughs> it shouldn't be too bad. All right, here we go. Ready? First one. One housewife you think you could live with? I don't think any of them. <laughs> okay. Oh, no. Kristen Takeman. We could live together. Yeah. Kristen Takeman. Okay. Best restaurant in LA? Craig's. I just like it. They Most have like, a weenie and hot dog thing. The right. what, what? Pigs in a yeah. blanket kind of thing? I like it. It's so good. <laughs> okay. Right. Uh, most overrated restaurant in LA? Mr. Chow. Oh, agreed. All right. Last person you met that left you starstruck? Oh, I haven't left the house in a year and a half. I'm trying to think. I don't really get starstruck, honestly, but I mean, because you see everyone here in LA, but I haven't, I have no recollection of being outside. I mean, shit, you dated half the Friends cast, so really, I, it doesn't I get much bigger than that. that. I went and sat down at a table, and I was with Kyle Richards, so she can say, yes, I did, uh, cause, uh, with Brad and Angie at um, the Bel Air Hotel. I just pulled up a chair. I was might have been a little drunk, but we had a great <laughs> conversation. <laughs> Did they recognize you as the question? No, because it didn't really even matter because I was drunk. And I, I told her I had just had a, a – we had the same boob doctor that took her – did her mastectomy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, taken out. I'm like, I know Christy Funk. And I just sat down. I don't know. And Kyle was like, oh, my God, you were over there for 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That's an awesome story. That's fun. Yeah. Um, of all the Housewives series and franchises – Who's the one person who should not be on the show? Oh, God, there's so many. Well, I was over Tamara and Vicky, and then they're gone. Um, I 
I think the Ramona coaster is ready to to go and live her best life. All right. Okay. Uh, have you ever done set up paparazzi shots? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, again, every time we do this, I am. I love when our guests tell us yes. We've had so oh. many people be like, absolutely, it's the smartest thing I've done for either my career or if I'm on vacation. Like we had Brian Austin Green on here and wow. he was like, fuck yes, I set them up because then I, I do you a five second it. photo shoot and then they leave me alone for the rest yeah, of the trip. I can control the narrative really. And I don't know, I don't know about today because it's been a long time, but they used to pay you to do it. So I was a single mom. I was like, yep, how much, how much? Come on <laughs> Who was the coolest celebrity to hit on you? Oh my God, and this is real, Jason Statham, but I was married and I am obsessed with him and my friends had to drag me out of Hyde when Hyde was like long and skinny before the big one. Yeah. But I was like, get me out of here before I ruin my marriage. <laughs> 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 All right. We're not alone. That's so funny. Um, let's see what else we got. One plastic surgery you wouldn't recommend people do. Doesn't mean you necessarily did it, but something that you wouldn't recommend for other people. Um, I just feel like do what you want that makes you happy. I don't. I don't. I don't. I, people are dying from Brazilian butt lifts, so maybe don't die and do that. People are injecting oil into their asses. You remember that? People are literally dying yeah. down there. That was it's, crazy. It's, I just think like in three years, like big butts are not going to be in style. And all of those ladies are going to be trying to get the stuff out of their butts. It, it sounds weird, but I just feel like it's just a weird time in, in style of bodies right now. It's like cartoon characters. No one can, I mean, people can live, look like it, but I just don't know what people would want to. Coolest celebrity home you've ever been in. Oh God, I've been in a lot. <laughs> <laughs> the coolest. Oh, like when I was really young, I was in Dolph Lundgren's Paris uh, apartment. Not what he had a girlfriend, but it was like just a really like you walked into like this very crazy apartment. It was very cool. That's fun. What's your what's your favorite food, by the way? Del Taco. Yes. Good what's, the, what's the one food that everyone loves that you can't get into? Truffles and mushrooms. Like I don't, I don't want to put mold in my body. I'm good. <laughs> okay. All right. Who is the best looking person in person, or best looking celebrity in person? That's a better way to question it. Probably my ex husband. <laughs> That's annoying. Like, like I'm getting older and he's getting better looking. I'm like, oh. Interesting. Uh, the your least favorite drug. Cocaine. It's really bad. My sinuses are fucked from when I was like 20. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Uh, okay. So that's the end of our speed round. Uh, we've got something else that's kind of fun for you. Um, we do a fan chat, uh, fan question roulette. All right. Okay. So people that listen to our podcast, they will submit questions for celebrities, not knowing who the celebrity is. Sure. Sure. All and right. we, and we haven't heard the, the questions either. Our producers put them in. And so all I know is their name. So we're going to do, we're going to pop them up and you can answer them. All right. Okay. All right. So the first video is from Shannon. Hi, my name is Shannon and this is three. Our question is if you got arrested with no explanation, what would your friends and family think you got arrested for? Oh, that's a... <laughs> <laughs> Not even a hesitation. <laughs> I, I have been arrested, so it's good. Not good. <laughs> Never do it again, but like, yeah, it's happened. <laughs> All right, that was a good one. All right, our second video is from Sasha. If you were competing in the Olympics, what sport would you compete in? Gymnastics. I did gymnastics for nine years. Nice. What What was like the level you got to? I was elite level. I was. I was really good. Like almost. Like I could have tried out for the Olympics. You got any old videos or anything? That's no, crazy. you know, I swear, if anyone can find them, please. Send them. <laughs> I, them on I was like, where is my video of when I can actually move? So I I was a gymnast when I was young, and <laughs> we just 
we just got all of our videos. My wife went and like sent them to Costco and got them all digitized from like high eight tapes. I haven't seen this stuff in like 30 years. And so we've been making it like a fun thing. We bring the kids in, we all watch these super old videos. I'm kind of so cool. jealous because I want them so bad because I was really good. And so I'm just like, I really want to share that. I want to see too, because I'm like, how did I ever do any of that stuff? Right? Yeah, seriously. All right. And uh, the third one is by Mylon. I don't know if that's correct how to pronounce the name. Mylon. Aloha. If you could disinvent one thing from the world, what would that be? <laughs> cell phones. No. Yeah. I mean, cell phones. That, it's a that's blessing like and a curse. I get it. I get it. I'm, I'm telling you, it, it, my cell phone gives me so much anxiety. I and sometimes when I leave the house and I forget it, I feel so free for that day. Yes, I know with kids and stuff, they were required to have it, but I just feel like the romance of the world and wondering what your day is going to be like is gone. Oh, I don't know yeah. if I could live without a cell phone, mostly because it's like, it is like my life life. And not, not the searching the internet or taking photos, but just, I feel lost if I get somewhere and I'm like, oh, I can't do something because I forgot my phone. But you can't text immediately or email immediately, but that's what like work days are for. People now, if you don't get back to them in one second, are you okay? You're I'm right. Like, I'm actually just walking my but dog. You, you couldn't even find a pay phone at this point in your life. So you'd be no, totally I mean, fine. Right. It's a blessing and a curse. Maybe it's just social media because it feels like it's a job. It is a job. I don't know. I just, they, I really hate my phone at most times of the day. <laughs> so <laughs> tell, tell us some more about unfiltered. I know I gave it a little shout out a couple minutes ago because I, you were kind enough to invite me to be on it, but yeah. tell people what they can expect when they listen to your podcast. Well, sometimes you can expect my guests to not show up. So that's fun. <laughs> um, like today, like listen, celebrities out there, you're not that busy. We're still kind of in COVID. You don't have an excuse not to make it. And if you do cancel ahead of time, um, <laughs> just that I just talk and I just talk like out of my ass. We're going on 10 years. Um, I say stupid things sometimes and I don't listen back. So you'll enjoy hating me or loving me or just being like, oh, I don't know. I just. I just like to like set the record straight on my own terms and talk to people and get information on things that I'm interested in. And if they don't like it, they can fuck off. I don't know. <laughs> Who would be like your, it. your dream guest to have on your podcast? I mean, it would be Howard Stern. I think that's everybody's like, you know, you just, you know, when you, I did his shows and his show and a few times and it was just like, I could, I had to pinch myself. But to imagine to be like reverse the tables on him, that would be a good one. Yeah. Really cool. Well, listen, check out Brandy's podcast, Unfiltered. It's really, it's unfiltered. The, the title <laughs> speaks for itself. She's, uh, she's awesome. She's real. She's, uh, and she's honest. And again, we really appreciate that and respect that. And uh, it takes a lot of balls. And she doesn't have them, but she has them. You know, she, <laughs> you, don't have, you know, it's just, it's, she's just cool. She's a cool chick. And also, she's a New York Times bestselling author. She has two amazing books. Check that out. Follow her on Instagram at Brandy Glanville. Brandy, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. It's been oh, a real thank delight. Thank you for really doing it a little earlier so I could give my guests that canceled earlier. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, Brandy, we've been wanting to have you a while, for a while. You are exactly what we expected. You're awesome. You're fun. You're unfiltered in your real life. And we appreciate that a lot. Oh, awesome. Thanks for having me, guys. Dude, she's awesome. She's uh, she she's honest. Cool. She's real. She's very, very cool. I'm really, really glad she came on. We've been trying to get her on for a while. And the times didn't work out, but she came on. But... You know, again, her and, and podcast is called Unfiltered, and she really is unfiltered. I was going to say, I mentioned this, but, like, we were literally supposed to have her on right when that, like, burn on her face happened. That yes. was 100%. Like, we were scheduled with her, and then all of a sudden she had to cancel, and she had referenced my face. Like, I, I had an issue with my face. Didn't explain what it was, but come to find out that was when, like, the burn happened. Yeah. So, and, and I, I think just, honestly, I think that's almost proof to people that it wasn't plastic surgery because she wouldn't have scheduled us to do an on camera podcast uh, for right after she had surgery. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. that wouldn't make sense. So it got burned. She then had to like bail out um, and, and then come back, you know, months later once everything was, was healed. 
I find it really fascinating and interesting to see her and Leanne on like an amical good relationship because that story was so big it was when so... it came out. I mean, it was all over the place and it was so it was wild. It was a yeah. wild story when that when that story broke, when Leanne Rhymes started a relationship with Eddie, uh, Eddie Brandy's husband. And they were going out dating behind each other's back. I mean, I remember being at TMZ when that one went down and getting like the security footage inside the restaurant of them showing up and having dinner and cheating on uh, Brandy. And I mean, just think about any little drama you have in your life, but then being magnified because you're in front of the entire world and the entire world knows that your husband cheated on you. Like that cannot be easy. Who's so... Who sold them out, Dex? How did it come out that they, you know, you? Well, they were in public. What do you mean? Stuff. Who sold them out? They were in yeah, public. Yeah, but they're in public. They're, I think they were like a sushi place or a restaurant. Yeah, where people saw and if you like, see Eddie Cibrian going in with Leanne Rimes, you got to remember Leanne Rimes was really famous at that time. Like, yeah. I'm not saying she's not famous now, but she was like really famous. So you see Eddie and Leanne, and they they kissed. I think on that security footage, so it was clear. I. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to look over and be like, these are two extremely famous people kissing and he's married. How did he? So let me ask you this. How do how does the security footage come out? Well, I got to imagine it was someone who saw the security footage that then released it. Yeah. So they sell it. (laughs) <laughs> you little snake. All right, guys. Well, thank you guys for listening to the podcast. We have a video p- component of this podcast. Uh, you can check it out on YouTube. The Hollow Raw podcast is on Twitter, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. We're on it all. You can find me at, at Adam Glenn. You can find Dax Holt at, at Dax Holt. We'll see you guys next time. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We got to say, we you can you can leave us a, a message, by the way. Call in if you want. If, you, if you're not comfortable with your video being up on, on for the fan question roulette, you can also leave us a message. You dial 833-HWR-LINE. So 833-HWR-LINE. Don't forget to uh, leave us a message there. Send in your videos. We want to use them in the show. And, of course, hit us up in the DMs. And leave us a review. That's it. We're out.